Welcome to the Blood Red channel and the agenda here on Blood Red. I'm Guy Clark alongside me, Matt Addison, as we get set to talk through Liverpool's forward options as the Reds' injury list becomes reality ahead of the return of Premier League action on Sunday as the Reds, of course, take on Brendan Rodgers' Leicester City. Prior to the visit of the Foxes and beyond, with the Reds set to embark on a gruelling run of fixtures through to the new year, we'll look at the squad options Jurgen Klopp could look to to pull in from the cold and fire Liverpool's title charge. Matt, there's been some big, big news through the course of the international break with a number of Liverpool players picking up injuries or being ruled out in terms of all different kinds of things. And I just wanted to, before we go any further, get your take on it because there have been a number of players ruled out. Yeah, every day it seems like there's another one added to that list for Liverpool. It's a very difficult time. It is important to say it's exactly the same for, for other teams, maybe not all in the same position, but you know, Leicester City are, are in a, a similar position. They've had a lot of players out this season as well. It isn't just Liverpool, but yeah, I suppose when you are focusing on, on Liverpool every day, you, you're sort of looking and seeing that Jordan Henderson has, has dropped out for England. Andy Robertson, there was that little scare in, in the middle of the three games for Scotland. He came back and obviously played last night and as far as I'm aware, has, has come through that and, and should be okay. But yeah, it's uh, it does just seem like one after the other. And, you know, we've seen even the the younger players, particularly in the defence, Reese Williams and Nico Williams have both picked up little knocks. I, I suspect that if Liverpool needed either or both of them for the weekend, they would probably be okay. I think it was more, you know, precautionary that, that they were left out of, of England under 21s and, and then the Wales game last night as well. But yeah, it's uh, it's a difficult period for, for all clubs, but it does seem especially important for Liverpool, given they all seem to be defensively. Yeah, and the injury break seems to have been littered throughout it with these different knocks and injuries, as you say, being picked up. Joe Gomez right at the start, and as you say, towards the back end of it, the Williams brothers, albeit no relation, Reese and uh, Nico. But one of the big names, of course, was last Friday, the news emerging from Egypt that Mohamed Salah has contracted coronavirus. And I suppose this is new territory for Liverpool. Mohamed Salah being ruled out of, of action. He doesn't miss any games, yet he could be set for a spell out of the team now. Yeah, it's uh, again uh, another worry for Liverpool. Not strictly injury related, is it? But it does mean that he will miss the, the game against Leicester at the weekend. And yeah, that will be only the third game that he has ever missed since signing for Liverpool in terms of being unavailable. So that the previous two was the Barcelona game that Liverpool won 4 0. Obviously, wasn't available for that one. Liverpool didn't miss him too much. And the only other one was the one all draw with Manchester United last season, the, the one that Adam Lallana scored a, a late equalising goal in that one. So, yeah, it is, it is as you say, new territory for, for Liverpool uh, in terms of the protocol and, and when he might be back. There is a chance that he will only miss Leicester, but that essentially would rely on him You know, next time he is tested for COVID-19, coming back with a negative test. If he continues to test positive, he will have to, to stay in Egypt. He won't be allowed out of there and, and out of, of the hotel where he's quarantining at the moment. He won't be allowed back to England until he tests negative. But as we understand it, as long as his next test is outside of that 10-day quarantine period, which we think it will be, as long as it comes back negative, he would be able to come back to Liverpool. He wouldn't need to quarantine upon coming back to Liverpool because that would have been done in Egypt and he'd be able to play and train as normal. So it could just be the Leicester game as long as his next test comes back negative. But obviously at this stage, we don't know what that will be. And if it is Leicester, if it's more than that, it will mean that obviously Liverpool are going to be without probably their best player so far this season. So it's going to be interesting to sort of see how Jurgen Klopp lines up his team with that you know, being the case and who comes in, whether there's a change in formation, as I'm sure you know, we're going to go through in the, the next few minutes. Yeah, it was only on Monday's Blood Red podcast, actually, we were talking about Salah and has had him recaptured his, his best form since the start of his Liverpool career. But in terms of alternatives and options, we've got a few guys, pictures above us, Takumi Minamino, Divock Origi and Jordan Shakiri. Of course, there is Diogo Jota, Roberto Firmino and, and Sadio Mane, who are all playing uh, very regular roles so far for Liverpool this season. But should Salah now not be available for a a little period of time, it might offer one of these other three players the opportunity really to try and stake a claim for some more regular football. 
yeah, I think that's the way that they have to look at it. They obviously know that they are squad options. They're not going to be first choice. I think you know, it would be a slight surprise if it wasn't, you know, Sadio Mane, Diogo Jota and Roberto Firmino, obviously injury pending between now and then. Fingers crossed nothing happens to, to any of those three in, in training or anything like that. But you'd imagine that those three will will be the three. But then it's a case of, of do you go with a 4-2-3-1? Do you add one more to that mix or do you do, you know in in future if Salah was to miss more than just Leicester you're obviously not going to play the the same three uh instead uh every single week uh, every single match so yeah it's uh, an opportunity I think particularly for me for Zerdan Shakiri. obviously he is the one that that tends to like to play on that right hand side where Mohamed Salah plays most frequently um and yeah the, the fact that Mohamed Salah is is never injured as we've already said I suppose it's a, a rare opportunity. I think it, it's something that Zerdan Shakiri will be looking at and thinking, you know, if, if he doesn't get an opportunity this weekend in place of Mohamed Salah in that role on the right-hand side, well, when will he? Because, you know, the evidence is there to suggest that once Salah is back, he's not going to get injured, fingers crossed, because that's not something that, that tends to happen to him too often. So, yeah, we, we have to, to sort of wait and see, you know, which option Jurgen Klopp goes with. But for me, I think Shakiri should be the favourite. Yeah, and he is a guy who this season, of course, has played more minutes than the others. And we'll, we'll get to sort of that in a, a bit more depth for what it could mean for each individual. But on the system, first of all, you, you say there, and people probably watching this screaming, thinking, well, it's going to be Jota, Mane and Firmino. But with the injuries elsewhere in the team, certainly defensively, if James Milner has to play at fullback, if Fabinho does come back and has to slot in, to defence. And Jordan Henderson, of course, left England early through the course of this second week as well. We don't know where Thiago Alcantara is. Hopefully, Naby Keita's fit. Jeannie Van Adam seems to have come through unscathed. But Liverpool might be very short on options in the centre of midfield and be forced into a 4-2-3-1 more out of necessity than uh, desire. And therefore, we might actually definitely have to see one of these players play in, in one of those roles. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's it's one of those where I think, you know, you, you've got Cater hopefully available. You've got someone like Curtis Jones, who I think has, has been doing well with England's under-21s during the international break. Gini Wijnaldum, of course, I think he's scored three in, in two games now for, for Holland whilst he's been captaining them. So there are a couple of options, but whether you would go with those three in a, a midfield three, I'm not too sure whether you would, whether you'd have Cater and Curtis Jones in the same midfield, I'm not sure. You know, whether that would work particularly against a side as good as Leicester where you know defensively Liverpool are going to need to be 100% switched on because that's obviously as we've seen in games against Manchester City and, and Arsenal even they've you know they've taken their chances on the counter-attack this season which is you know the, the way that Brendan Rodgers is probably going to set his team up at, at Anfield as well so yeah I think there's a, a good chance that we do see a two-man midfield and, and then one extra further forward just because of, of the injury situation so far there's no sign of Thiago as you say I think he'd be a, a huge player for, for a game like this just to be able to dictate the tempo really make sure that it's Liverpool who are in possession you don't give it away cheaply you don't lose it in silly areas and, and give Leicester any encouragement to, to sort of counter-attack and, and go forward with pace and, and speed and width so yeah it's one of those where I think injuries will dictate to an extent the shape that Liverpool play. And if they do have to go with an extra attacker, that won't be an issue. We saw that, that Jurgen Klopp went with a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-2-4 against Manchester City. I think if you can do that away at, at Manchester City, you can certainly do that at home against anyone. And you can certainly you know go and, and do that against Leicester. So, yeah, it will be interesting to, to see who comes in. And you know, as you can see on the screen there, I think there's... Uh, Probably a couple of options that would be ahead of Divock Origi. I think that would be a huge surprise if he came in. But then, having said that, of course, against Manchester City, it was Origi who was on the bench and, and Takumi Minamino nowhere to be seen. So there are options, but I think for me, at the most likely situation would be that a Shakiri or, or a Minamino came in and Liverpool went for a, a 4-2-3-1 rather than a 4-3-3, as long as the injury situation is as it is at this moment in time, and nobody else comes back between now and Sunday. Yeah, I think that one, that the graphic on the screen there demonstrates sort of the, obviously the importance of Mohamed Salah. Of course, Mane has himself tested positive for coronavirus and been out of the, the side himself as well, albeit obviously Liverpool's third most minutes there for a forward player so far this season. Let's take Jota out of the equation and talk about the other three on the list there then. Let's talk about Takumi Minamino and 
we were so impressed with him through pre-season, playing off the left and playing in central areas. And you do wonder if it is the 4-2-4 option that, that Liverpool maybe do go to, that Firmino and Minamino in a central role together, as opposed to Minamino being the backup for Firmino in that role. If, if you had the two of them together, they might wreak havoc in that area with Mane and, and Jota either side. It's quite, a, quite an exciting prospect to think about. It is. It is. It's definitely a, an exciting prospect. I think, you know, if you sort of asked me a few days before the season started, which would be the player out of Shakiri, Minamino and Origi to be the first choice backup. I think, you know, given the pre-season, given the situation of, of all three of those players over the summer, it would have been Minamino that you thought would be that one. But it, it just hasn't quite happened for him so far this season. But yeah, as you say, that the four, well, four two four, four two three one, whichever you want to call it, I think that is the system where you get the most out of Takumi Minamino. We've seen him play out wide. We've seen him play as a, a number nine, but for me, he is a number 10. He's the one that, that should be almost doing the Firmino role. But at the same time, I think you could probably, as you say, have Firmino and him working sort of together as a, a number nine, number 10 and, and can sort of work it, it between themselves. You know, sometimes it'll be Firmino furthest forward. Other times it'll be Minamino. And you sort of get that flexibility um, within the, the tactics that Liverpool employ. So that would be a, a really interesting option. The only thing that would stop me from doing that, I think, is that you'd then have to play Diogo Jota off the right, which I don't think is, is his best position. I think he's much better either on the left-hand side or, or through the middle. So it's almost a, a bit of a jigsaw puzzle to, to fit them all in. But if you were going to go for, for Minamino and, and bring him straight back in, again, had a, a good international break. I think he scored for, for Japan, uh, certainly in one of their games. Um yeah, it, it would be certainly something you could think about. But I think the evidence so far this season would suggest that, that Shakiri is slightly ahead of, of Minamino. But look, there's, there's going to be you know matches every two or three days. There's going to be you know changes that, that have to be made. I think at some point we are going to have to see Takumi Minamino. It's just a question really for me of, of whether you would bring him in for a game as big as this one. And I do think it's a, a big one because, of course, Leicester City, top of the table, really impressive so far. I think it's it's one of those where it would be a slight risk to bring someone completely out of the cold into a team like this, especially considering he didn't even get on the bench in the, the, the last game before the internationals. No, let's talk about a man who really would be coming in from the cold. There are no minutes in the Premier League so far this season for Divock Origi. He has been on the bench in five of the eight games that Liverpool have had so far in the Premier League. He's only starting the, the uh, Carabao Cup third round game with Lincoln City, came off the bench against Arsenal and also came off, uh, sorry, also uh, played against Midland at home in the Champions League as well. But I suppose a bit like Shakiri, who we have spoken up, that sort of 18-19 season, the spring of that coming in and doing what he did against Barcelona, against Newcastle United in that sort of time period, as well as Liverpool really were going on both fronts. Divock Origi always comes to the full. Everyone's written him off, doesn't he? He does. Uh, I am going to write him off a, a little bit here. I think he is the sixth choice. I think he is behind Shakiri and, and Minamino. Um, I don't think he's done enough uh, so far this season. I don't think he did enough throughout the entirety of last season either. Obviously, he is going to go down as a, an icon. He is you know, somebody who scored some great goals for Liverpool, being a, a huge part of their history. But it would be a massive shock, considering he's not played at a single Premier League minute. It would be you know, a huge call to, to bring him in. I think he's best as a number nine. I think you could work him you know, similar, similar to, to Takumi Minamino in a way, really, which I think um, in that 4-2-3-1, that is his best formation. Obviously, he'd be the, the number nine rather than the, the number 10. But I do think that is the way that you would get the best out of him. But then it's a case of, well, if you've got Origi through the middle, what do you then do with Roberto Firmino? You then don't have Minamino in there either. It, it starts to, to sort of fall apart a little bit when you start to, to think about how that jigsaw puzzle would, would fit together. So it would be a huge shock for, for Divock Origi to come in. Um, I suppose the advantage is that I don't think he's been away with Belgium. I don't think he's been playing there. So he would be fresh. He's been training all week. That would potentially be the one advantage that, that he could have. But yeah, for me, it would be a huge risk to, to bring him into the team because 
you know, I think he's been given enough chances and he just hasn't really shown it so far. So yeah, it was a, a big surprise that, that he was on the bench and, and Minamino wasn't against Manchester City, but it would be an even bigger surprise if, if Origi was uh, to, to start at, at the weekend. And a word on Shakiri. then. We've spoken around him and his sort of jostling for the jersey. Perhaps his salary is going to be unavailable for a period of time. How, how do you look on this sort of comeback that he's forged this season for all intents and purposes? Everyone thought he'd be out the door during the course of the summer, but he's taken every opportunity that's been given to him and in a number of different positions as well. Yeah, I've been really impressed with him. I think in that sort of midfield role, that third midfielder, that's something we've not seen before from Zerdan Shakiri. It's not something that really I would have thought that he'd be particularly good at. He's not exactly known for his defensive ability or you know, being able to to press and, and do that sort of thing. It, it's very much a, an on-the-ball thing when you think of what he is best at. But yeah, he's slotted into to various positions. He's you know shown real experience, real sort of maturity. I think he probably going into the summer transfer window would have thought that his time at Liverpool was coming to an end. Liverpool had put a price tag on his head, which you know they wouldn't have, have made that known really if if they didn't have any intention of, of letting him go. So yeah, in another world he, he could easily be, you know, playing for a different team, whether that was in the Premier League, whether that was abroad, I don't know. But certainly there was there was interest, but no one was prepared to, to pay the fee that, that Liverpool would want. So, yeah, it's been a, a real sort of comeback story for him. I think he can be a pretty important squad player for, for Liverpool. But as I said before, I think this weekend is, is going to be really sort of telling as to you know whether Jurgen Klopp has really properly got him in his plans or not. Because I think the fact that, that Mohamed Salah is not there, a real rarity. If Zerdan Shaqiri doesn't play this weekend and doesn't start... You wonder, you know, when is the next opportunity for him to play in a game of this sort of magnitude to, to start and, and be in his favoured position? So, yeah, I think it, it could be quite telling as to, to what happens with his future. I'm sure there'll be interest in him again uh, next summer. Certainly wouldn't imagine that Liverpool would want to, to sell him on in January. But, you know, I think there, there will still be question marks over his future going forward because we know how close he came to, to leaving Liverpool this year. But, yeah, the, the renaissance of Shakiri has been fantastic. Hopefully that can continue and, you know, fingers crossed for, for him, he gets a few opportunities from the start as well because, you know, he's shown, I think, so far this season that he can slot in, he can be a, a very valuable option for Liverpool and he's one of those players that, that has got, you know, so much experience and I think he's, you know, out of Origi, Minamino and, and him so far this season, he's the one that has really been performing closest to what we know that he can do. So, for me, as I say, he'd be in the team on Sunday but if he isn't, I think that will possibly put a, another question mark in his head as to whether he should you know, be looking to, to move on at some point in the future. Yeah, well, Mohamed Salah, Liverpool have only missed him, I think, for, for stoppage time in the home win over West Ham United. So they really have. It's been a rarity, not only through his Liverpool career, but certainly this season to be without Mohamed Salah who will still have eight goals from eight games in the Premier League so far this season. But how will Jurgen Klopp deal with the headache of not having his top scorer for Leicester's visit to Anfield? Leave your comments in the uh, comment box here on the Blood Red YouTube channel. Let us know what you think. But from myself, Guy Clark and Matt Addison, thanks for joining us here on the agenda. That's all for now.